feel like you're all by yourself? Perhaps you don't want to be all by yourself. Well, friends, you're no longer alone because this is VGM 101, a podcast. One of the only ones out there. And if that's not enough, you will always have the stars, planets, moon, and sun. So there's no need to be all by yourself anymore. We and the sun have you covered, pal. Trust in me, trust in the sun. The sun is soft. The sun is warm. Vitamin sun. Sun of creation. Sun soft. Sun corporation. Today's topic, music. You're not alone when you're by yourself anymore. Not alone with me in your room, in your ears, with the soft sun and the sun soft. It's time to get going. Time to get up. Time to get moving. Time to get out into that sun for some vitamin me. Vitamin Me is the vitamin U because it is made for your body to make ye feel like the bee's knee. Wait, singular knee? Nope. How can thee withhold another two knees? This isn't Vitamin Me, it is Vitamin U. It was you all along. Take two doses a day for both legs. Can you do that? Am I a licensed physician? Nope. Pre-order now at Prolfeed101.com. Pre-invent your ligaments. Pre-pay your needs. Don't forget to save your knees. That music introducing the show was from Albert Odyssey, Legend of Eldian, from the Sega Saturn, a planet. You're not alone, folks. That song was composed and written by Naoki Kodaka. This tasty little tune behind me, now in front of you. And behind again, this is Satoshi Asano from Blasting Again. Perhaps the only true Blaster Master sequel, considering it was the one developed by Sunsoft themselves. But that's not what you want, Sunsoft, today. And what you want is this.
tracks 3 and 5 from the original Blaster Master on the NES by Sunsoft's master composer Naoki Kodaka. We are going to hear a lot of music from this guy today, <laughs> so strap into your tank.
what an ear-blasting parade of musical numbers, all from our guy, Naoki Kodaka, all crystal clear, intense, and from a variety of different 8-bit Nintendo games. Starting that rock block was track 7 from Master Blaster, then some Freedom Fighters, followed by the boss music from Batman. Finally, stage 4 from Journey to Syphilis, and a little ditty from the Famicom exclusive, Euphoria, the Saga, or Habareki, as it is known in Japan. I think it's about time that we slow things down. Right down. Hit the brakes on that tank. Right now. And I'll meet you on the other side of Reminiscence. Odyssey, the other side of reminiscence, whatever that means, proceeded by Good Bargainer from Albert Odyssey 2, both by Naoki Kodaka for the Super Nintendo. That last one, also composed by our main man of the day, was a beautiful little medieval melody entitled A Gentle Breeze on the Plains, and I, Ben Weinbrotz, feel it. Oh, I felt it, baby. It gives me the feel.
welcome to VGM 101. I'm Ben Weinbrotz, and today there are some rules. I have some rules. R rules. Silence. I won't let you play your music because this is my time. I'm funny, right? Let me just, uh, let, okay, um, let me, <laughs> okay, the rules are that, um, you might be wondering where Return of the Joker is in all of this. This is a Sunset episode, it is a revenge, <laughs> where's revenge, Return of the Joker, return revenge, <laughs> No, you're wrong, Bobby J. We are only playing games developed and published by Sunsoft that I see fit, so there will be some rules. Your song doesn't count. Long silence with background noise. Can you hear my my AC working right now? It's central air, it's very hot in here. Um, long silence. We take our legacy very seriously here. Back to Bladdermaster with this, my favorite track, and therefore, the best. I'm Ben Weinbrotz. I'm funny, right? Long pause for comedy. Long pause. Can you hear my AC? Yeah, so I don't think that uh, this song really, uh, um, was that an awkward drop from music to, oh, uh, has it been this long already since I've actually played some real music? Oh, ah, uh, mmm, ah, uh, awkward, oh, uh, let's talk about kids. Long pause, air conditioning.
And with that, we'll say goodbye to Blaster Master with the second area tune followed up by the third track from Hebereki. Euphoria. Moving on. Journey to Silius. An intended Terminator game that Sunsoft adapted into one of the best platform shooters on the NES. One I've never been able to get very far in because, like most Sunsoft games, it is difficult. Far too difficult, if you ask me. If it weren't for the music, I'd have probably given up trying sooner because I'm a quitter. Here are the first three tracks delivered in their intended order, starting with Prologue, then Title Theme, and the iconic Stage 1 music. This is Journey to Silius.
There is an intended progression on display here that is extremely interesting for an 8-bit soundtrack. Out of all Naoki Kodaka's early work, I personally find those three Journey to Cilius tracks to be the most polished and exciting. The instruments are crisp, well-defined, and there are tons of calculated, well-written solos. It also takes a while before the title theme and Stage 1 tracks loop, a rarity back then. Naoki Kodaka's style is fully developed here, and it is unmistakably his. Next up, another example of Kodaka fully enveloped in this progressive idea. Listen for the revisited repri and tone throughout this soundtrack. Gremlins 2. The New Batch. Crystal clear melodies, harmonies, and bridges. I'm not sure how Kodaka conjured these sounds from the NES hardware, but it is nothing short of incredible. 
from Gremlins 2, that was the title screen music, followed by cutscene display and The Office. The hit British sitcom brought to the United States of America. This next one is Ventilation Shafts. Keep in mind that I'm playing all of these in order. The sequencing of these tracks is akin to something from a well-produced album.
That's right, that was Big Battle closing out that set, the mystery closer clue from episode 7, 8-bit movie game music, BGM 101. If you guessed correctly, you get nothing. Ventilation shafts, gremlin battle, under pressure, c'est pas bon TV set. Those songs rounded out that block. It's time to get serious now. A question for y'all. Are you spooky and you dooky? Flooky dooby dooty. Hat da 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 fruitney. Some of those chiptune big band horn sections remind me of Turn It On Again era Genesis for some reason. The band, not the system. Think of something besides video games for once, people. That's Happy Birthday from Gimmick! Exclamation point. But you may know it as Mr. Gimmick if you live outside of Japan. When you're this big, they call you Hong. Gimmick. A soundtrack composed by someone other than Kodaka. Gimmick. Mosashi Keijiyama. A happy little melody when it is your birthday and you have no other friends. VGM 101 will be your friend. Birthday wishes, back rubs, chocolates, chocolate covered back rubs, and more Kodaka.
Special Rescue Assault Group, better known as Hard Edge for the PlayStation 1. three and five from T-R-A-G, or Hard Edge, depending on where you're from. Music composed by an unknown individual. Preceding those two tunes was Sewer by Naoki Kodaka again, in an impressive take on dark electronic music. What I dig so much about this one is how it sounds like a loop after this first hook, when really it is building with that snare, festering even, Hear it more again here. I'm beating a dead horse here, I know, but it wasn't until I sat down with a gigantic library of Sunsoft game music that I came to realize that this would be an episode focused on one man rather than a relatively short-lived company. Those drum, bass, guitar, and keyboard sounds are all the workings of Kodaka's mind and skills. I've listened to a lot of Sunsoft music these past few weeks, and I've whittled down the catalog to games mostly developed and published by them. Back in the day, their logo ensured quality, much in the same way as Konami and Capcom did. Unfortunately, however, Sunsoft began to outsource their games which led to their demise. It's a fact that all of us aged gamers know now, but back in the 90s, I would rent and sometimes buy titles based on the developer alone, and this corporation really did let me down. As a fan of the Looney Tunes and an aspiring illustrator myself, I spent money on titles such as Roadrunner's Death Valley Rally, ooh, that's a mouthful, and Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage. Now, these were essentially broken games that looked and sounded great. 
So if you're wondering why this episode features so much Kodaka and 8-bit music, it is simply due to Sunsoft not having so many Sunsoft made games in the 16-bit era, and that's Sunsoft not being Sunsoft anymore. Speaking of Sunsoft, here's Sun Man, a game that was never released. Sun Man. Hirohiko Takayama from the unreleased NES game Sun Man. A game that was supposed to hold the Superman license before, like the Terminator game, it was removed for whatever reason. Go back to VGM 101 Episode 7 to hear my thoughts about cheaply made cash grab video game movie games. The thing that's confusing to me is that Sunsoft were seemingly hitting it out of the park with their movie tie-in games at the time. Or maybe that's only in hindsight. Did enough of us purchase Gremlins and Batman to make it worth the publisher's while? I don't know, well, I saw Batman all over the place. All my friends had it, family had it. Sunsoft would later publish a few Superman games, but under other development companies. I know the death and return of Superman isn't wholly a Sunsoft developed game, but they are credited alongside Blizzard for its existence, and I think that counts, at least on the Super Nintendo. The Genesis version is completely different. Good thing I'm not on that other show with that guy who has rules, right? Because I'm breaking all of them right now. This is the death and return of Superman on the Super Nintendo. Composers, Michael Morhaime and Glenn Stafford. Two pretty western sounding names to me. Take that as you will.
uh, uh, actually, uh, Bobby J, uh, Death and Return of Superman, Trouble in Paradise, uh, and uh, Death and Return of Superman boss battle. I hear a note that Bach wrote once uh, in uh, Synth. Uh, okay, none of these songs uh, count. Um, uh, uh, air conditioning. I, I, I really wanted to play a rare video uh, a game. Donate, please, if you like. Call us at 345 Tales. Er, no, that song, um, okay, 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 oh, oh. I just, I just don't think that song fits the format, it's Sunsoft, we're talking about Sunsoft today, not, oh, okay. uh, Sunsoft, air conditioning, followed by a real awkward, <laughs> cut, into music. This is V VGM one oh one. Call me at three four five tails. No one's opinion is as important as mine. <laughs> oh ah, uh, just just joking. Comedians say, is just joking. Awkward pause. Air conditioning. Funny comedian. So, uh, what's with the Peter Gunn theme and old games? I mean, this one's a variation, directed by Naoki Kodaka, surprise, surprise, with help, though, this time around. Why, why did he need help with this? This is a song that already existed. Here is the Peter Gunn theme from the original Spy Hunter, followed up by the one Fallen did for Rock and Roll Racing. I hope that self-indulgent dude doesn't come back, because we're all breaking the rules around here. Uh, VGM 101, the podcast no one listens to. Now featuring Peter Gunn. All the time. Every time. Whatever the time. Thank you. 
We've learned a lot today, haven't we? Naoki Kodaka is the Sun Lord of Sunsoft Land and the Sun of all creations. The sounds of Sunner. The sunnier path towards failed movie tie-in games. I've been your host, Ben Weinbrotz, and I hope you enjoyed this rather abusive episode. It demonstrates my power. What songs did I miss? What are your favorite real Sunsoft licensed Sunsoft games? Let us know at worldfeed101.com. Did I miss something in this episode? What's the next VGM topic? Who knows? I do. Ah, uh, uh, I do.